Out comes Emo Corbin. He has a whole video package recapping his misery. He's lost everything. His crown, his car, his investments, and his savings. And now the bank is threatening to foreclose on his house. His two-year-old daughter is sick from eating spaghetti out of a can instead of Wagyu beef. And worse of all, they might have to move in with his wife's parents. The good news is, you can help me. I've started a crowdfunding site. Corbin Fund Me, where his goal is $100,000. And tells the audience, don't tell me that all of you in Texas are as cheap as everyone else around the world. He gets on his knees and begs. What did you think about the Corbin Fund Me segment here? Well, we were wondering what this entire like emo Corbin thing was leading up to. Um, you know, there are rumors that uh, Happy Corbin was a trademark. Uh, at least this week, that doesn't seem to be the case. Um, instead, I get the sense that this was all leading up to you know, their, and maybe Vince's um, interpretation of how he feels about people asking for handouts through crowdfunding campaigns. Here's Baron Corbin um, putting up a fake crowdfunding campaign as a heel, asking for donations for um, frivolous things, of course. I'm into the angle now. It is surprisingly contemporary. Um, and I... I think it's a great way, you know, of course, I don't necessarily completely, you know, uh, feel like every, like, I don't, if if there is sort of like a a message. I I think there is a certain like mean spiritedness to this that you just outlined there of what is Vince McMahon's idea of broken down wrestlers that do not have money after destroying their bodies for this Mm -hmm. industry. And let's not. If for those that want to give the benefit of the doubt, let's dial it back to October when Baron Corbin was also on the kickoff show scripted to mock Jeff Jarrett's uh, sobriety. So th- this is not a company that I don't think has done a whole lot to earn the benefit of the doubt either. Sure. Yeah. Um, but as a way. Sorry, like- that was Elias. That was Elias doing the uh, the Jarrett bit on the kickoff show, as I recall, because they did a song for it. But as a way for a heel to get heat, I thought Corbin played it like they made Corbin play it really well by, you know, kind of giving these kind of backhanded insults, uh, not just to the crowd, but out out here to Kevin Owens in his way. It was a much more like now we know what the Corbin character is. And I think he's doing I, enough subtleties to make you very clear to not have any sympathy for this version. And dude, since he started this character, like I, I think Corbin has played it very well. Uh, <laughs> sure. Uh, dude, I, mean, I, I think this a... Corbin, this is like a departure from the prior Corbin that I think was just go away. Like, this sure. is something that at least, dude, this guy is at least committing to this whole bit. Yeah. I mean, I can't really say, like, good does not necessarily mean the acting was, you know, Daniel Day-Lewis, okay? But was it effective? I mean, tonight was your barometer, and tonight it was definitely effective. I'm not looking for Daniel Day-Lewis on this show. Give me, um, give me prime Leslie Nielsen and I'll take it. Okay. All right. Kevin Owens interrupts. Uh, this audience goes nuts. Uh, Kevin Owens. I cannot imagine seeing a happier man than Kevin Owens. This guy, they should have trademarked the happy nickname for, because that is what he was walking out here. Happy Owens. Happy yeah. Owens. He was just, he was screaming. Uh, at the adulation of this crowd. Corbin asks Owens for help. Says, we're a lot alike. Kevin, I know you have money. (laughs) And I know you don't spend it on your wardrobe. And with that, Owens hits the stunner. Crowd went nuts. And this is a fun little segment. I'm into it. I'm into this, Corbin. He needs a funny name now. Baron Corbin. Oh, B-A-R-R-E-N. Yes. Yes, that is it. 